to the third topic for this session and in this topic for this session again we will be focusing on a small illustration Modiglianian Miller approach. We will take the formulas ahead. Now we will see the formula which you saw how to find out the price of a share. We will take it ahead and see how does the company gets impacted in the form of value of the firm. To make our concept more clear why Modiglianian Miller conce concept was so focused on regarding the dividend decisions do not impact the value of the company. Let us do this illustration. Ram company belongs to a risk class for which the appropriate capitalization rate is 12%. Okay, cost of capital is given to us as 12%. It currently has outstanding 30,000 shares selling at rupees 100 each. So one share is currently selling for rupees 100 each. The firm is contemplating the de declaration of dividend of rupees 6 per share at the end of the current financial year. So dividend paid at the end of the year, how much they are contemplating is 6 per share. Company expects to have a net income of rupees 3 lakh and a proposal for making an investment of rupees 6 lakh. Show that under Modiglan and Miller assumption, the payment of dividend does not affect the value of the firm. How many new shares issued and what is the market value at the end of the year? So we'll take the formulas ahead. We will take it more further and see how Modiglian Miller focuses on the dividend payment does not impact the value of the firm. Keep your formula clear, how do you find out? So when we talk about if the dividend is paid, right? how do you do it? The formula remains the same. Market price of a share is equal to dividend at the end of the year plus market price at the end of the year. Divide the full equation plus by 1 plus cost of equity. So as you can see the current market price of the share is 100 dividend is 6 now we're doing the first part dividend is paid what happened price at the end of the year you need to find divide the full equation plus 1 plus cost of equity cost of equity over here is given to us is 12 percent right? focus on the same concept how you do it same way solve it up you get the price at the end of the year is 106 rupees right this is the first part if dividend is paid how do you get as the price of a share at the end of the year let us do the same formula. Let us see if dividend is not paid, what will happen? Only instead of dividend paid, which wrote as 6, before you have to write a 0 now. Same formula. So, dividend will be 0. Price at the end of the year, you need to find. Divide by 1 plus cost of equity, which is 12%. Right? Current market price of a share is 100. So, if dividend is not declared, how much is your price of a share? Because the price of a share increases. That is 112. So, if we say, the company pays dividend, the shareholders get impacted, they lose and the company does not pay dividend, the market price of a share increases. But how do we focus on so much that the value of a share company does not change at all? When we talk about the value of a share, we talk about the complete market value of a share is not affected. The value of the shareholder is not impacted. How does Modiglian and Miller say it? Let us continue this illustration now. Remember the previous illustration I did, you saw the market price of a share increases there also and in this illustration as well the market price of a share increases. But how does the value of the share does not get impacted? Let us see how will we find out the number of new shares to be issued. You can let us compare dividend is paid and dividend is not paid what is happening in this company. Net income of the company remains the same. If we focus on the net income given to us is how much? 3 lakhs. So we saw see over here what is happening as such. Net income of the company remains the same that is 3 lakhs. Total dividend is how much if dividend is paid is how much 6 per share right how many shares are there in a company 30,000 so 30,000 into 6 gives you how much 1,80,000 so total dividend gives 1,80,000 in case dividend is paid dividend is not paid leave it blank let us continue so if income is this much dividends are paid where did the remaining money went it went as retained earnings Right. Remember earnings available to shareholders. In earnings available to shareholders, we decide how much dividend is to be paid, how much is to be retained back in the business. If dividend is 50%, retention ratio will be 50%. So if I say 3 lakh is the profit to be distributed, 1 lakh 80,000 is paid as dividend, how much is retained back in the business? 1 lakh 20,000. So 1 lakh 20,000 retained earnings and dividend are paid. If dividend is not paid, 3 lakh is the total profit, nothing is paid as dividend. So, how much the retained earnings? 3 lakh only, right? Similarly, how much the company is planning to do investment? If you remember this illustration, they say company is planning to make a new investment, a new proposal of investment for 6 lakh. So, how much the new proposal of investment? 6 lakh. Now, how much amount the company needs to raise now? So, in the form of new shares, how will we find out that? Investment minus retained earnings. So, if we say investment minus retained earnings will give the amount of new shares to be raised as such. Now, we need a 6 lakh. Retained earnings, how much we have? 1 lakh 80,000. So, remaining money company can borrow from the market. 
for the sales sufficient to the extent of 1 lakh 80 thousand when dividends are paid so how much new shares the company needs to issue when the dividends are paid 4 lakh 80 thousand continue a dividend is not paid there no retained earnings happening so full 3 lakh need to be raised from the market as such right now market price of a share is how much you saw we found out just now in the previous using the formulas market price of a share when dividend was paid was 106 when dividend was not paid was 112 right now if you have new amount to be raised you have market price for share can you find a number of shares to be issued yes investment is there total money to be raised you have the Market price of a share, can you find out the number of shares? Right. 4 lakh 80 thousand divided by 106, 3 lakh divided by 112. Give you the number of new shares to be issued, which gives us 4 lakh 4528 in the first case. It gives us 2676 in the second case. So, number of new shares to be issued. How did we got the number of new shares to be issued? What is the value of a share? Market price into number of share. Right. Now, value is given to you, market price is given to you, can you find the number of shares, right, cross multiply, that's what we did over here as well. Now, total number of shares, how much do you have now, at the end of the year? If you remember, total number of shares given to you in the illustration were how much, 3 lakh. 3 lakh, the company had existing shares were 3 lakh, company issued 4,528 in the first case when dividend is paid, and the company issued 2,570 in the second case when dividend was not paid. So, total shares become how much now? 3,4528 in the first case when dividend is paid, 3,26,078 when dividend is not paid, right? Now you have the total number of shares to be issued, you have the new capital to be required, market price of a share is how much? You found out just now, 106 in the first case when dividend was paid, 112 in the second case when dividend was not paid. So you have the market price per share, you have the number of shares, can you find out the value of share, right? Multiply the market price with the number of Shares, so market price into number of shares, that is 106 into 34,528 will give you the number or the total value of the shares. Similarly, dividend is not paid, same again, market price per share into the number of shares will give you the total value of the share. If you compare now, the value of the company remain the same. The market value of the shares do not change at all. It is same in both the cases. So if you pay dividend, if you do not pay dividend, that is what Modigliani and Miller focused on. It does not impact the value of the share. Maybe when you do not pay dividend, the price of a share increases, right? The price of the share increased. But if you find the full value of the shareholding, does not change at all. And that is what Modigliani and Miller focused on. You pay dividends, you do not pay dividends, do not affect the value of the shareholders of the company. Because you can see there is no change in the total market value of the share. This illustration is important because we continued with the formulas which we covered before. We found out the current market price of a share and we used the market price of a share to find out total number of shares. Total number of shares, how did you found out in this case? The old shares divide, add up the new shares. And the number of new shares were changing in both the cases and dividend is paid and dividend is not paid. Because the retained in earnings happen and dividend is paid and no retained earnings happening when dividend is not paid. This is what Modigliani and Miller focused on. But still, if you see, Modigliani and Miller has certain criticisms for it, the certain drawbacks of this method because one major drawback of this method is that we assume taxes are not paid. But if you see practically, we all need to pay taxes. Be it a personal tax or corporate tax, everyone has to pay a tax at some point. So, assuming that no taxes is a major drawback. Similarly, one more major drawback of Modigliani and Miller approach assumes that there is no risk and uncertainty in the investment. It is not practical in present day life. Risk and uncertainty goes hand in hand with returns. So we can't assume there is no risk in the life of a company. Similarly, it does not consider flotation cost and transaction cost. Remember cost of capital. When you raise cost of equity, cost of debenture, the certain flotation cost needs to be incurred. Our initial cost needs to be incurred. Modigliani and Miller does not cover that as well. So if you see, it does not, it's not a bit practical in nature because it also assumes investors behave rationally. Okay, But we cannot give the assurance that all the investors will behave rationally. So we can tell the investors to investors, shareholders to shareholders and company to company what type of dividend and shareholding pattern they have. But Modigliani and Miller approach focus on the same thing that dividend decisions are not relevant. This is a theory of irrelevance point of view. By focusing on one formula we saw over here and we saw how the value of the shareholding is not impacted if dividends are paid and dividends are not paid.